Yeah, tonight, episode eight, we are joined by David K. David, Dave. Yeah, Dave. Dave. Yeah, yeah. Dave K. Yeah. Thanks a lot, mate, for coming. Uh, really appreciate it. Taking a lot of time out of your, your diary to come and do this. So, no. yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you, boys, for having me on. Oh, brilliant. Um, also, alongside me, Jake. But Yo. He's got bronchitis. Yeah, so bad can't voice. Have, can't hardly talk. Um, so, David, we don't know. First actual guest, we don't know. And <laughs> it's not a mate pulling in a favour to help us out with an episode. <laughs> so, just tell us, how did you become the artist that you are today, if you um, don't mind? Well, the I came to be an artist really through like self therapy. Um, Ex military, the Iraq and Afghan, um, struggled a bit when I came out. Mm. Well, I I didn't really think that I was struggling, but um, family members I last knew straight away, mm. getting snappy and stuff like that. You know, the, uh, quite general stuff that I should have really picked up on, but I didn't. Um, so I didn't see a problem at the time. Uh, so they uh, sort of like said that you need, you know, you need to go and see doctors, see what they can do for you. Um, so I booked me sent in and they put me in touch with a therapist. Mm. Um, therapist sort of just um, a lot of talking, which helped, but it, it wasn't really enough. Yeah. Um, so uh, she sort of like got into what sort of stuff do you like doing and stuff and I were when I were on tour in Iraq and Afghan I used to draw uh, a lot between patrols just to kill a bit of time mm. so I told her that and she was like oh why don't you go back to that and see if that can help you so I did and it answered her and it, it helps it helps every day every day yeah every day is it like a no like when people say go to gym to train your muscles you're training your brain by just that's relaxing, it. drawing, you're in your zone, you're yeah. in your area sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It just sort of like takes me away from everything. Was it something you did as a child? Was um, it something you knew you were good at growing up? It... Not really. I used to, just normal stuff, max power days and stuff. I used to draw cars in classrooms and stuff yeah. like that and that would have it. Never, I didn't try hard with it in school or all like that. I actually failed it, so... Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. Good work, is it? Yeah, I didn't Best like... thing you've ever failed. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, so, yeah, I've always sort of had an interest in it, but never never went along with it. Mm. Yeah. So, if, if you don't mind, can we go back a bit from being the kid that failed art in school? Yeah. Sort of your decision, decision to joint forces and sort of how long you know can you tell us a bit about your military background because yeah, it yeah. sounds like this is a pretty damn important part of how, yeah. how you got to where you are today yeah um so my mum wouldn't let me join army when i was 16 i did want to but she wouldn't let me hmm. uh, so i waited till i was 18 joined up um basically only joined up to get a driving license that is the only yeah. reason why. Um, ended up in, uh, I joined a cavalry regiment, Royal Dragoon Guards, um, and I joined as a tank driver. Oh, wow. Um, so doing that, we did, well, I joined in 2006. Um, ended up in Iraq, uh, 2007. So about a year later, we ended up in Iraq. So you were 19? Yeah, brand new to it. Fuck yes, Brand new to it, never experienced anything like that. Wow. Although I did join up knowing that I'd end up out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what, 19, what year did it start? 2000 and, well, 2001, wasn't it? I don't know. 2002? 2001, I think so, yeah. 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 I think so, Americans right, went yeah. in like 2001, right. didn't they? I don't know when we joined. Um, so, yeah, 19. Were you around other 19-year-olds? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. And younger as well. Wow. Yeah, they were... Um, there were some that was waiting to come in, they were waiting to turn 18, so they could come out. Bloody hell. Yeah. yeah, so as soon as they went 18, 18, they were out with us. So what is it, like, obviously you, you you said you joined at 18, you went straight out there at 19. What did you do? Just have like a year, because obviously you've got to do your initial sort of six months, aren't you? Yeah. And then what were it like, right, we need to get you learning to drive this tank sharp because yeah. we need rid of you? <laughs> well, yeah. Fuck so hell. you do, you do, uh, we did... 14 week basic training down in Winchester. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Bovington where you learn how to 
drive the tank, maintain it, um, other sort of trade stuff that you need to be doing at your regiment. Um, but there's other stuff like signals, how to use the radios and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so it's it's more in depth, but still basic soldiering. Um, then I think I was there probably about four or five months and then you join your regiment. So my regiment were out in Germany. Uh, so you're living out in Germany and it's mental <laughs> living over there. I do miss it. Mm. Yeah, because you you're constantly on it all the time. You're at the bar. Most, oh, right. most days you're at the bar. Yeah. Um, unless you're, you're training to go out on tour. I mean, you're still, you, you know, you're still going to bars and stuff like that, but the training does ramp up a bit. Yeah. Well, quite a lot, to be honest. But when you're out there, before you start training to go on, on a deployment, you basically nine till five, learning your craft and yeah. doing your bit. Yeah. And yeah, then straight it. out drinking heavy <laughs> yeah. European lager. Yeah, with big boys. <laughs> yeah, I bet you learn a, a, lot, a lot about drinking quick yeah. out there, man. <laughs> yeah. So were you with the, your girlfriend at the time, partner? And um, No, we... Well, we met when we came when I came back from Iraq. Right, that's when we met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, how long did you serve in Iraq? How many? Uh, so we were there. Our squadron. We were there for three months. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we got pulled back uh, because that's when they were starting to bring people back. Okay. So we got pulled back and then um, put on like notice to move to go back out there. So we were constantly training keeping his fitness up keeping up with what's going on out there mm-hmm. uh, just in case we were put on like 24 hours notice to move right yeah, yeah. so but there is where did the drawing sort of come in or were it just a constant it came in more afghan than iraq oh sorry so you were yeah, afghan yeah. after right okay yeah yeah so what so, year did you go out to afghan uh 2010 for uh, we were out there for six months. Right, is yeah. that a solid six months? Yeah. Uh, well, you have a you have a two week R and R, but it all depends on where that R and R falls. Right. It could fall two week into your deployment, and then oh you've got my God. the rest of the tour. Or you could it could be two week before your tour ends. Yeah. You know, so it's it's it. I should try and get it in middle, but yeah, I literally take my fucking hat off to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's we match about tens. I, I I moan about two night shifts. <laughs> Wow, you miss it though. You do, do I? I miss it every day. Yeah, yeah. I miss being with lads and that. And I think that's where the problems were. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because when I came out, I wasn't around people. Mm. Didn't I really? Have, but you, you feel like you don't have people to turn to. So what were it almost feeling like loneliness? Yeah. Not not loneliness. Well, yes, yeah, because yeah. it is, isn't it? Yeah, because you haven't got you know the 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 people that you were with. You're living with them. You know, you're with them twenty four seven. Especially when we're in Germany. Um, because you're in the same rooms, you know, you're sharing rooms, uh, you're out, you know, getting smashed. And mm. then, you know, you, you, you're getting back in at six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock, you're out on an eight mile run, <laughs> you know, but you're all doing it together. So you're yeah. all just like taking me cart with each other. So yeah. <laughs> see who flicks first, it was usually me. I think that's what, Tez, we, we had a RAF um, lad on a few weeks ago, didn't he? And he said that they were itching to get home. And then when he got home, it were the uh, it was camaraderie. The, yeah, the camaraderie and yeah. the everything were routine. Out, yeah, routine. It were out of routine. That's the yeah. word. They were out of routine. Everything were uh, free for all. They didn't have a re- like regimented routine, which really struggled with. Which he thought he were going to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is that. So what? What? Were there a certain event that caused you to no, I'm not going out anymore. I'm pissed. I'm gonna sit in, in my room and draw. Or were it just on your lunch break, doodling or don't? Yeah. So when when we went out to Afghan, um, we used to get a, quite a fair bit of time between us patrols. We were in Kandahar at the time. The rest of the regiment were in Helmand. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were providing force protection for VIPs. Um, President Karzai, uh, SAS, we were patrolling, well, we were running them around to where they needed to be, to heliports and stuff. Um, so in between them VIP trips, we had a lot of time. 
Um, so, and it does get boring. There's, there's only so many times you can go to a gym. Mm. Only so many cups of coffee you can drink. Mm. So I, that's when I started drawing and just doing bits. And did someone, while who you were serving with, think, fucking hell, Dave, you're good at that? No, or, not really. No? Nah. Nah, they just think you're weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what? Nah, you get ribbed for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did a bit. Wow. But it is what it is. Look yeah. at those laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. None of them are on tell as your tale, are they? <laughs> well, I think the easiest thing to do moving forward, really, rather than us just constantly asking questions, I think the best thing to do is go from you doodling Afghanistan and just take us from there yeah. best you can through to yeah, where we yeah. are now. So uh, when I came back from Afghan, um, we, we, we lost a few boys in that while we were out there. Um, the, the, the regiment were planning to go back out in 2012. Mm. Um, when I got back uh, from Afghan, found out that our lass were pregnant. Um, didn't really want to go back out there knowing that I've got a child, don't we? Yeah. So decided to come out of the forces. Struggled like mad to get a job. Um, did a resettlement course in like maritime security. Did that for about a year. So working in. Uh, the Gulf of Om, uh, Aden, I think, mm-hmm. um, but like Sri Lanka and all them fight on pirate, you know, put oh, pirates right. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on ships. Oh, wow. Did that for about a year. Um, and then Ala sort of told me that I need to get a proper job. You need yeah. to be here for your daughter. So we need you to come home now. Mm. Then came on, went into engineering because that's like the qualification that you, that you got with my trade mm-hmm. um, as being an engineer. Started engineering, and to be honest, I did engineering right up until uh, last year. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's only been full time for. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. A year just gone. Oh, congrats. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Do you know what? I'm, I'm laughing because you fill us with with hope. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you were an engineer twelve months ago. And, I mean, obviously, you told us a little bit, and we're going to get to it. But where you are now. To yes. 12 months ago, that is, it's 12 months difference. is not a long time. No, no, not at all, not at all. But I mean, I started really doing the art when I came out. So 2012, I came out, um, went through my struggles and stuff. Mm. We're not being able to sort of adapt to civil life. Right. Um, struggled to get a job when I came back from uh, doing the maritime security. So I ended up washing cars and stuff outside the house for like a tenner. You know, freezing cold winter and stuff, but I needed to get some money in. Mm-hmm. So cleaning cars, just all sorts, bits and bats. So we're on demolition as well. Uh, so doing that every now and again. Ended up working at SCS, loading lollies, loads of different jobs in between. Yeah. Um, then I went into the engineering properly. But while I was doing that, I, would, I got more into my drawing. And I just used to do like um, join trainers and stuff like that. So if there were a release coming up of like um, a hyped trainer, yeah, I'd draw it, yeah, um, and then post it up on social media and see what came of it. And it used to do quite well. Mm. And then uh, a lad from Size in Leeds approached me. He was like, "Oh, um, lo- we love your stuff. Uh, do you mind doing like you know?" six or seven pieces for him we'll put it up in shop oh sweet so i did that it went up in shop i was like proper buzzing with stuff like that yeah 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 yeah. um got noticed by nike um all them so i used to do if they had a drop coming up Mm -hmm. they'd come to me and say look can you do do a join of this and we'll give you exposure you know i'm not it's yeah. not paying my bills, but... No, but you're getting inf- your face yeah, out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. It. Yeah. So I did a bit of work for Nike, JD. And then I sort of like branched, well, not branched, but I wanted to experiment a little bit with paints. Mm-hmm. So I painted, I painted Wiley. Uh, you know, the... the yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the Garage MC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I painted Wiley. I'm just getting used to it. First one, posted it up on um, Twitter. Mm. And... He got it straight away and he messaged me. He was like, I want to use that image for my next album cover. Oh, so I was like, hell. what? <laughs> yeah, so he was like, I want to use it for Godfather. I think it was Godfather 2. Right. That he did. 
And he was like, I'll pay you 300 quid for it. I was like, what? Are you going to pay me for it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you can have it. Wow. But yeah, so I, I did that. How old are you at this point? Um, oh God, I'm not sure. I mean, what, it probably been about 2014. Right. Yeah. 20, yeah so, 20s? Yeah, I would have been. Yeah, late yeah. 20s. Fucking hell. Yeah, late 20s. But yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a mad one that when he phoned me and that. So he's like, "Oh, give me your number. I'll give you a bell." I bet. It was, so, I bet that was like. Yeah, nah, it was uh, that. Yeah, Frank exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "What is going on?" Back then, so 10, 11 years ago, social media <laughs> won't have been what it is now. No. no. Which is absolutely mental. I bet that you. was like the start of Twitter, where you where you could, like you say, interact with celebrities. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you would have been probably one of the first. To get a reaction from a celebrity, probably. And it's yeah, yeah, that's it. It was quite easy then. Yeah, yeah, yeah to yeah. get them. But yeah. Wow. So now did the um, did nice. album cover? Uh, I worked more with his label than anything. Mm-hmm. He would just sort of like in background, he's like, yeah, yeah, do this, this, and this. I was like, right, okay. Did all that. It got released, and that was the end of it. Fucking three hundred quid, the cheap <laughs> bastard. No, well, should have had royalties on album, man. Well, that worked thing because they used to email me all the time. Did they? Did his album cover? Well, his uh, his management and that. So that it gets to like one, two o'clock in the morning. Phone had got it's like an email. We need you to sort this now. It's like, well, it's like you, you know, you're quite lucky that I'm awake. To be fair, mm. so every time that I emailed them, I put an invoice in for it. Oh, ah, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, 300 oh, quid. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, good. Yeah, That's good. It. I think I ended up getting about three and a half grand from him. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> it's not a bad starting point, let's be honest. <laughs> no, exactly. So, yeah, so from that, I would just, I went experimenting more and more with paint. So I was painting on canvases and stuff now. Um, and I used to go to like, because I live in Thornton, and they used to do, well, they still do, but they do like a market stall, uh, little marketplace in uh, Main Street. Mm-hmm. And I got a little stall there and I had all my work, I had all my trainer work, um, a few canvases of stuff that I painted, like I painted DWE and Eminem and Dr. Dre and that. And I sold everything. It was, just, it was mad, I just sold everything. Um, so I just kept painting and painting, posting it up on social media, Instagram and stuff like that, tagging everyone. And it sort of went on from there. I got started getting little exhibition shows in London. Um, and does someone reach to you and say, why don't you try this? Or did you just say, oh, I'll go down that avenue? Or did someone... Um, that was sort of like up to me. I just yeah. painted what I wanted to paint. A bit like what I do now, but... Um, yeah, then I didn't really have a focus on how... I just wanted to paint and be creative with stuff. I'd see stuff, I'd be like, right, I'm going to paint that and see how I get on with it. Still learning. Every day is learning, watching YouTube, you know, learning from that. Because I don't have no artistic background as yeah. such. Yeah. Sort of self-taught. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the more I painted, the better I got it and the more noticed I got. Wow. Yeah, so there were a couple of exhibitions that went on in London. Uh, sold a few pieces and that. And then it it went really quiet. And then I went back into a hole mm. as such, yeah. So I, I crept back into an hole. Didn't notice it at first, um, but eventually I did notice the little signs and stuff. And I reached out on Instagram. So I put a, a series of videos that I put up on my stories right. of how I was feeling. Mm. And if anyone else were feeling like that, it was okay. It's fine. You know, you were going to get through it. Oh, because wow. I was in a, quite a deep hole then as well. Mm. I don't know why. I think it's because I want painting as much. And there were, there were quite a bit of stuff going on. Right. Just life were busy at that time. Yeah. And I think it all sort of got on top to me. I was working a lot. Mm. And it just sort of built up and I lost control of it. So did you, is that when you, no, when you said it quietened down, were that through your choice or were were the sales not as, as rapid as the war when you were doing your markets yeah. and whatnot? So obviously yeah, yeah. it's, it's the band, demand weren't there, so you want, to, you want drawing as much. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They're just, 
everything fell off the painting, slowed down. Uh, people want buying, mm-hmm. you know. Then there's, you you question whether, you know, is this gonna go anywhere? What's you know, what's the point in me doing this? Yeah, you you start to get in that little, you know, that everything's negative, and that's a, that's when I started noticing mm. that I was in this place that I didn't need to be. Right. So. Yeah, I think that's mega important what you just touched on then because I mean I'm assuming as well while this were happening you were thinking. Right, I've been making money by selling art. Yeah, it's all now slowed down, so I'm not making as much money. The worry so then that. you're starting yeah. to think, yeah. how else can I make money as well? Yeah, we yeah. speak about this quite a bit, don't we? Mm-hmm. In past, I've I've spoke to people, and they're like, "Just, I know you're in a bad spot, but tell me what what's been happening over the last six months." And yeah. you're like, "Well, I got my jaw broken." I'm having a kid and I've had an epileptic fit and I've lost my driving license and da 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 da. And when you put it all out, you're like, yeah, that's why I'm feeling shit. Yeah, but yeah. at the time, you're just like, why do I feel like this? Yeah, I don't deserve it. this. I ain't done all to. Yeah, you, know. you, te- you take a lot on, don't you, without thinking that you're taking a lot on. Like yeah. you say, like you listed that list then and each. Each time a little thing hits you, you don't think that much about it. But sub- like we're saying, subconsciously, you take a lot on each day and it does just get yeah. to you. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, were, I was working at the time. I was I was still doing engineering, but I was a service engineer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was working all around country, but I was working very long days. So I was working like 18 hour days, you yeah. know, so I, I was burnt out, mm-hmm. you know, stuff will not going how I planned it. They would bother at work and stuff. But I mean... Little things like, I went to my gaffer. I, I noticed that I had a problem. I went to my gaffer at the time and explained it, and I ended up breaking down in front of that. You know, and I've never broke down in front of anyone apart from like our last or my mum. Mm. So to for me to break down in front of you know someone that I don't really know, yeah. um, were quite a big thing. I'm like, yeah, there's something not right here. Following month, they sacked me. <laughs> Did you, they? What? Yeah. Oh, that was nice yeah. of them. That'll yeah, have fucking that's, right that's, helped. It's yeah, a fucking yeah. tribunal I mean, nowadays, that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Isn't it? Yeah. It's a fucking winning court case, no matter... Yeah. Jesus Christ. Could have done, but I just... I, I would... You know, to, to be fair, I was happy that I went away from it all. Yeah. Yeah. I would... There were a lot of weight off my shoulders. Mm. You know, I want travelling about. I want... I was with my family, and I want working, you know, silly hours. So this... In why... Like, last year... You know, when you said you've been drawing for a year, is that oh, why? No, oh, no, no, no it's oh, we not, are no. choice then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, oh, was, this, this was like 2018. Oh, right. It was after that that I started taking it a lot more seriously with my artwork and stuff. Mm. I was still doing engineering, but when I'd finished work, I'd have like an hour with, with family with our last St. Little. In, yeah. And then I'd be in kitchen painting, just keep doing stuff. So, so here's one. When did you say you're David Kay, the artist? I don't even say that today. No, <laughs> no. no it's weird. It's, I, yeah, I do you know what I mean? Feel... It's, do you still feel like you need to pinch yourself sort of thing? Yes. Yeah. How is this my... Yeah. Ju- even though some of the work I've looked online, it's it's fucking incredible, really, what you can do. <laughs> and um, it's, yeah, so... That's off to you. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's strange. I'll, I'll call you David K, the artist. I'm, <laughs> I'm, happy with, I'm happy doing that. Do you think going through that shite stage and then that company releasing you from work were also, it sort of put you in a position where you had a choice, like I can completely take control of what I want to do now or I can keep doing what everyone else wants me to do. Were, it, were, it, were there a point in your head where you were like, right, fuck this, I like drawing, I'm good yeah. at drawing and this is what I'm going to do, sorry, painting, but... Yeah. Yeah. That was it, yeah, well, was with everything because I knew that was my therapy and I knew it could make me better. Mm. So I was just like, right, I need to knuckle down with this now. I've seen myself going to my all. I need to get me sent out of it and I need to work on this now. And just, and I did oh, painting and painting for mums, uh, emailing galleries, getting in touch with loads of different people on like Instagram and stuff. Just trying to get as much out there as I could because I wanted to make some out of it because I knew it, it was good for me. Awesome. So, yeah. It, it, that 
you, you can't argue with anyone that te- takes control of their own life. I mean, like, obviously we'll get to the position you've got yourself into, but it's not through luck. No. No, it's driving. No, Do you know what I mean? Not. It's You had something in you that you knew you wanted to change. I mean, I think it's an amazing that the thing you love doing the most were the biggest factor in helping yourself yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So you've been you've you've left that job, you've hammering round kitchen table. What what <laughs> sort of where do we go after that? Um so I am still like painting and painting. Um I got I got in touch with a gallery and they said like we'll take a couple of pieces and we'll see how we get on with it. Mm-hmm. We'll put you in a show. I think it, it will have been two far, back end of 2018 it was. Um, they took a couple of pieces in London and they were, they were well known as well, a well known gallery. So went down to the show, uh, down to London with family um, and they told my pieces before the show had even opened. They told them and they'll be like, we'll, we'll do the same again, you know, next year. Um, and then a gallery that had gone there to have a look at like the work and stuff and see what artists there, because they had some like some massive international artists on the show. Um, so it was like, they got in touch with me and said, we really like your work, it's really unique. Um, how about doing some pieces and we'll do a show. Wow. And so is this, I, I don't want to butcher and I don't want to offend you, is this your character like what would you call yeah, it yeah. i was just gonna say can you explain a little bit about your art yeah, yeah yeah because it is it's not the same is it but it's no. similar yeah character like the shapes of the, yeah. the heads and whatnot yeah um so yeah what would you call that because i didn't want to offend you by calling no, it a no, character shape. and yeah. um secondly uh yeah i think that was it for now I've got another question, but I'll leave it for an, a minute yeah. or two. Yeah, so the, the the character is, to be fair, it's based on my daughter. Right. Um, and there's loads of different characters. Yes. Like, um, like the, the, jammy, char- the Jammy Dodger one, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a, them little bits that I put in are just like random stuff. Yeah. That I'll just think of as like, that look pretty cool, but it look weird as well. Mm-hmm. No one's going to get why it's there. Mm-hmm. So I'll just chuck stuff like that in and make people question my artwork. Why is that? Why is it even there? Mm. Um, especially people, you know, in um, Central Asia and stuff like that, they're not going to know what a jammy dodger is. Right. So they'll be, they'll be like, what is that? You know, so. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. A lot, a lot of it is to be questioned, um, but also left to the imagination as well, mm-hmm. which a lot of it comes from mine and my daughter's imagination. Right. So were these, the start of like the doodles in Iraq, did any, or Iraq, uh, anything no. like that? No, no, these are what came recently. Right. Yeah, so 2019, I think they started. I started with them and then it's just sort of built with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, working around this character. Um, some some characters are based on like my friends, um, families, where you know I've, I've spoke to them about it and it's like, look, I want to do this. It's like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, so base around stuff like that. Oh, wow. We, we, we've obviously looked at your, your artwork and you, it is unbelievable. But like what you've just said then, that it, it sort of leaves a leading question. I yeah. feel like it leaves a million, million. even yeah. to <laughs> colour at background and yeah. what the colour sh- hair they've got and why is he riding a dinosaur? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah. is there a deep meaning in it? Does he just like T-Rexes? Yeah, so, yeah. I, like I said to our lass, I wonder if it costs a, quite an oversized head. Yeah. I wonder if that's because he's got a lot going on in his head. And she's like, <laughs> Maybe it's not. I'm not like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but how do you get the perfect circle? When Do you have a template? Of where you start, or no, just draw it on. Um, use compass and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Don't yeah. have a plate. Your fa- favorite plate to draw around. <laughs> yeah. <don't> know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big plates. Um, yeah. So just draw it on, really, and then go from there. Paint, right. acrylic, and the usually the finer detail work that I use is doing oil, oil mm. paint. You can get a bit more depth and stuff like that with it. I was I was going to ask that because ones that I've looked at on. Um, on internet 
could have literally been drawn on the computer looking at them <laughs> like there's no there's not a blemish or a mark or anything it's mm. like so perfect perfect yeah, yeah. yeah. like you yeah. couldn't you're making I, some up with almost uh, uh an an animated theme look yeah. real life mm. like you can imagine the thing walking through your room do you yeah. have a name yeah. for the characters yeah, that's, yeah. They... not really no. no 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 i do need to come up with some names yeah, for them, though, yeah. because i wouldn't mind because that with, with my newer work i'm trying to tell like different stories and and mm. stuff like that like ones it looks a bit like batman but it's not because i'm not allowed to go down that route yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. but yeah it's similar to yeah yeah so what I what I imagine him like is the you know the NFTs where yes. they're all like the I'm so glad you brought this up. <laughs> like and again, I didn't want to offend you. No, but no, no it's like the similar, but yeah. every one is completely different. Is yeah. that summer when so when you did your first one, did you think this is what I want to work around, yeah. or did someone say did one of these galleries did they say we like this, do yeah. more of this? Yeah, well, that's it. So you, if um, we like most artists most like international artists they have a certain style or figure mm -hmm. that they'll work around um so there's an artist cause he's got his his chum and stuff like that so very recognizable um there's a lot of artists just stick with one character mm -hmm. or a couple of characters and then they work around different stuff different backgrounds doing different things yeah so it's it, it's so you're recognized right yeah yeah so you so you work going forward like you say it's not batman but it could be close to yeah is that going to be similar again where they look alike but completely different again yeah yeah, oh, yeah. brilliant where well the thing that i sort of think of is the smurfs like they're all small blue characters but yeah, they've all got one, their yeah. own personality yeah, but yeah. realistically it's the same thing but yeah. different yeah, it's yeah. real hard to all as listeners this is such an odd episode. Now I'm thinking about it, but yeah, just Google we'll attach, David K. R. Yeah, I'm we'll sure. attach all your website yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. So keep going, mate, because I'm it's, I'm it's intrigued. Loaded. Here, like I'm enjoying yeah. it. So, like the only no, the only art I've ever known of, really, uh, obviously school, Van Gogh, Picasso, and whatnot. But like recently, uh, my mum's husband collects Bob Barker's. Right. Now, like you say, I don't like our Liam's got one now. Um, but I think my mum and Mark have got two or three. Yeah. But like you say, you can tell they're his, but each one is completely different. Do you know what I mean? It's like a very dark uh, background with very subtle hints in it. Like there's one called Chips and Gravy and it's kids playing cricket in the street. Right. Uh, in a dark, gloomy street, but there's two lights and it's a gravy sign and a chip yeah. shop. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that's yeah. how they got the name and... I think our Liam's got one where it's uh, rugby players that played for Stanningley. Oh, all right. But it's all professional ones in like a, on a dark, muddy pitch. And they've all got like the Bradford, but whether team that went on to play from Stanningley. Yeah. They subtly dropped in there. It's, it's quite good. But like you say, each artist obviously has their own touch and whatnot. Yeah, that's so, it. The, 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 I, I just went on a man tad for <laughs> no reason at all, so yeah, I apologise. <laughs> no, but I think that, it, especially for us, art is realistically everything. That's, what, what would you define art as? Like, a, is it an expression or is it something that the, you know, some people might say this table's a piece of artwork because it were made, but it's yeah. to me, it's a table. Yeah, yeah. It's it's bizarre. It's, it's podcasting art, is it? Well, <laughs> this it is, one's not. This is, it's very rough. <laughs> <laughs> There's, um, have you ever seen the picture, the pale, pale blue dot, is it called? And it's the picture of the earth from outer space. Right. And it's basically just black and this tiny tiny pale blue dot yeah and that's the earth and to me that is the most artistic thing <laughs> yeah. it, it for me that shows how insignificant we are yeah but to someone else it's just like well it's picture it planet yeah yeah it, it's, it's it's how you look at stuff in it yeah and i think that's massively with yours especially even though you may, may have drawn it with your meaning behind it, other people can maybe pick out stuff, whether it be from yeah. their childhood. And yeah, yeah, it's 
I'm, we're, we're absolutely boggling as brains here, yeah, but yeah, I've never are. sat down and spoke to someone no, about art, and it's yeah, only no. now I'm realising <laughs> how interested I am in it. So I, let's get back on track. So yeah. you had the you went down to London with your family. Yeah. The time you got there, your two paintings had been sold. Another art gallery were there. Then, yeah. So I did. Um, they took a couple of uh, pieces. So I did like a group show with them. Mm. Um, they sold straight away. Um, and what happens is, it's that like other galleries are always they're always looking. So and then you've got other collectors and that that are keeping an eye on what's selling, mm. um, what's what's hot, basically, because they want to get in and you know they they want to have the you know the next the next big artist that's coming up. Mm. Um, and I think they sort of saw you know saw a lot in my work, mm. um, and they took a. I wouldn't say they took a risk, but they were just like, yeah, we want to keep pushing you, we work. Um, and then, but they, they like pushed on to other galleries. So more came forward. Um, more collectors got involved. And then, because it only takes that one person to buy a piece and then send it to Sotheby's. And right. then it goes on from there. Loads of people see it. They then see that you've got work available or few pieces available mm. and they just buy it up so how do art galleries work like at minute they're buying per piece or requesting per yeah. piece can you hold a contract with an art yeah. gallery yeah right. yeah so you um, you have a contract at the beginning of it it's just all like terms of condition of shipping and stuff like that um and obviously the pricing and stuff so um, sorry Karen. no no so when they sell it, do they sell it for you or do they buy it off you at, co at cost, say, and then sell it and make their wedge? Yes. Or do you get a share of that wedge that they make? Yeah, or, so yeah. they sell it yeah. and they don't, they, they request it. Mm -hmm. So they might say, we've got a group show coming up. We want two pieces off of you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll send them two pieces. They'll put it in the show. Uh, they'll send PDF out to all their clients, collectors. Mm -hmm. They've got all the contacts and stuff, and there's, they put all the you know the effort in for the shows. So yeah. So how are they looking at that? Are they looking at it as though they're taking fifty commission, or it's their artwork and they're giving you fifty percent commission? No, I know it don't really matter, at, but yeah. So they're just seeing it as like they're just taking and selling on. Yeah, they're just like your middleman really. Yeah. Um, but they've got all they they've got all their their contacts. So no, going no. from selling Wiley, his first, uh, well, his album cover, yeah, and you getting offered a figure, now that your pieces are going into shows and galleries and things like that, yeah, how do you work out a fair price? I mean, obviously, you'll know in your mind what it's worth to you. But yeah. yeah it, who... is, is there someone in place that sort of... Value, um, values it for you and whatnot. It, yeah. At first, there were. So they sort of said, look, we think, you know, we'll be able to sell it for this. So they came up with a figure and they're like, what do you think about that? And what did you think? Yeah, so I, I was just blown away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was hoping for, yeah. You know, because I'm used to selling my artwork on a market stall for 50 quid, mm. you know, for a massive canvas that I've spent a week painting, mm. selling it for 50 quid. I've got people still bartering me down. So I'll give you 30 bar for it, it's like sound. <laughs> 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 but at that point, I was taking it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so from, from that to then... People tell me that, you know, we think we'll be able to sell this such and such a piece for, you know, four and a half grand. It's it's a massive step. Ed, Ed fully fell off. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I can just imagine him having Conor McGregor moment. Get out the red panties, <laughs> baby. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> so go, just, con, just continue, mate. Cause yeah, I, so I'm just... Like from that and then you've got bigger galleries approaching you. And then, like the the next minute, you're made aware that there's a piece of yours that's at Sotheby's. Oh, and it, for people that don't know, like myself, yeah, uh, so what, what's that? Sotheby's is an auction house. Right. Um, I think they've got they've got one in China, London, and New York. Fucking hell. 
Uh, it's, I think it's one of the one of the biggest, if not the biggest. You've got Christie's, Phillips and Sotheby's. Wow. That are big ones. Sort of like a so market you, stall in farming, yeah, yeah, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 uh, so you've got like Banksy's and, and stuff like that going up on there. Bloody oh. hell. So there were a few Banksy pieces that were in there when mine were in there. It's just like, How? that's unreal. Mm. It, it doesn't sink in. Oh, it still doesn't sink in now. Though. I was just going to say, you, you don't... I now feel like I'm sat across from <laughs> a celebrity. A celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were sat here talking like, yeah. yeah, just sit at kitchen tables sometimes and draw a few bits, and then this <laughs> fella from China around me. It's, I don't. I I really hope that when you listen to this conversation back, yeah. that you take more credit, unless yeah. you're doing it quietly. <laughs> yeah. But I don't feel like you take to, foot, to yeah, us. Yeah. yeah. How you're no, talking now, no, but, I don't think you understand, like, the magnet. I, I can't even imagine how you could understand the magnitude of where you are. But in yeah. a way, this is what we wanted when we started this podcast. Yeah. We wanted someone, working class, from yeah. Bradford, to have done something. Yeah, and yeah. it's safe to say that, oh, we wanted doing something, done something, achieve something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's safe to say that we've fucking got him sat across from the yeah, table tonight, you know what I mean? <laughs> So do you know exactly how many pieces officially, like, from when you started? Not from Fortnum Market. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> after I can't count them. And... From them first two that London requested. Do you know yeah. how many pieces you've actually done from then to now? Or is it just a constant revolution of sending? Um, at the beginning, there were quite a lot of, so like 2019, when I first got with, like, the galleries and stuff, there were quite a lot of work that were getting pumped out. I've then slowed it down a little bit now because um, I want people to appreciate it and not, not just buy it and stick it at the back of the rooms and wait for auctions to come up and throw it in. So I've sort of pulled it in a little bit so that there's less. Yeah. Almost less giving it an ex- exclusivity. Like, yeah. yeah. Like them trainer releases you're talking about. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. It, and then, it? you know, and people is, snap yeah. them up. Yeah. So, uh, what? Well, has it taken you anywhere in the world? Has it, have you had to travel to galleries to see it up? In, yeah. In, in, so where's it taken you? Yeah, where? um, it's taken me to like you know, New York and that. And it's, yeah. Um, I've got a show, a solo show in LA next month. Um, I think the, the gallery owner we, we've spoke about it and he said that he's going to fly me out and get me out there mm. uh, for the opening. Then in June, I've got a group show. So there's like three artists and we all put a couple of pieces in into the gallery um, and then they do a show on that so all three of us were going out there to Philadelphia in June just for a couple of days to sit up in the show and stuff like that wow. do you need a baggage handler or <laughs> like that or a chef yeah. <laughs> I'll sit next to uh, Art on flame there or whatever yeah. <laughs> fucking hell That's but yeah it's, you, you get to travel a lot yeah you yeah, pinch you yourself do. when you're in LA a lad from Bradford yeah, I know. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's, it is mad is that I'd have never have seen myself in this position where people's like, we'll fly you out for it. Mm. What? Mm. What do you mean you'll fly me out for it? So I've never been able to afford to go places. I haven't no. been on, even been on a lad's holiday before. Mm. Never been, I've, I've always been away or never been able to afford it. And now they're like, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll just pay for it. Sound. Fucking good on you. So where does it go from here? Hopefully as, as far as it can. What, what is what is like when do you get to the point where you go oh, oh, all right i'm i'm getting there now like i think he needs to see that now yeah. to be fair but, <laughs> yeah. no but I, probably yes. never to be fair I'll, I'll just get i'll keep going with it yeah yeah I can just keep doing because uh, the underlying reason with it for doing it is to help you yeah yeah, yeah. just keep my head where it needs to be instead of wandering off yeah oh. so i'll I've always said to our lass, I'll never retire from doing what I'm doing. Yeah. No, never retire from it. Good on you. So have you uh, sold to anyone like famous, any celebrities that you know have got their, their, your artwork up in their house or anything? Not that I know of. No? Not that I know so of. Would, so say if a celebrity bought it from the gallery that you sold it to, could you find that out? Or? Um, I could if I approached them, mm. uh, approached the gallery and said, look, can you just let me know? what people have bought what then did let me know that yeah. but you've got to go out your way and ask them stuff i don't right. 
I'd, I'd rather not pry on like who's yeah of course who's yeah, yeah, work. yeah yeah if they good. want to show it and yeah tag me in it and stuff like that then yeah, fair yeah. Ones. i was just gonna say power of social media it's probably takes yeah. over a bit somewhere yeah, yeah, stick with wiley then We're happy with wiley then to be fair out with so yeah far. well i've got yeah. um i've got the weekend as well in i mean, it's june or august i think august one i think it's in manchester on august and that's been organized where i'm going to uh give a painting to him so yeah. I'm trying to get just, a studio just drop visit. That in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> no celebrities, but the weekend. Oh, 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 yeah, I'll accept that. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I don't. I just, stuff don't sink no, in. No, with me. I, I, Literally, it goes straight over my head. Yeah, as yeah. long as you're painting with that brush, that's, that's all that matters. Yeah, good on you. It. Fucking good on you. We've spoke about it a little bit. Like, obviously, this is new. I mean, your episode eight that's going to be released we've got quite a few recordings up and we've had a few conversations about things we could do and every time we've come back to the same thing just keep it natural let it do what it does yeah we're not bothered about statistics and things like that and i mean i know you're also doing it for you know to keep yourself on straight and narrow but i think it's so important that anyone listening anything that you do yeah it's only going to work while you're enjoying it as well. Yeah, that's it. You start falling out of love with it. There's, you know, you might as well pack it in. So you you know your ideas. Yeah. Do you have to? Do you sit down and plan it, or do you start drawing? That's a good question. Yeah, yes, yeah. so I do sketch out my pieces, um, plan what I'm going to put into them and stuff like. That. Recently, I haven't. I've just been seeing what comes as I'm doing it, um, but. With shows coming up, I'm getting a bit more into it where I'm planning stuff mm-hmm. um, because they they might send you a layout of the gallery, uh, the sizes of the walls and stuff. So you need to plan around that. Oh, well, uh, right. And then I need to plan what's going on to the canvases because they might have a, a theme or something that you need to work around. Or they want you to work around and stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm planning a lot more sketching. I try to draw every day before I start to paint just to keep my hand in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. How so, different is it drawing and painting? I mean, I know it's quite obvious for us. It's one's a paintbrush, one's a pencil, but how what how big of a difference is there between doing a piece of artwork with a pencil and doing yeah, it with oils? And, massive difference. Yeah. Yeah, massive difference. I've just done uh, a couple of pieces in charcoal, and the amount of time that it takes me to do the same pieces in charcoal to paint is massive. We're talking days, days between. Days more with a paintbrush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. you've got you've got to wait for it to dry. And literally sat watching paint dry because yeah. you've got to wait for <laughs> it to dry before you can put your next onto it. I suppose burning question for me and you is, do you not use a tattoo gun? <laughs> you know well, what I did? Because I've done my leg. Have you? <laughs> yeah. When I'm do you want to start on mine? <laughs> I, I, what I was going to ask you is, has anyone asked your like, friends, family to draw a tattoo for them or yeah, a, yeah, like that, a design for them or up like that? Yeah, yeah, it used to be quite a common question that uh, yeah. people had asked me to design a, a tattoo for them. But with having friends at tattoo us and stuff, they'll always change it. Yes, so there was no yeah. point in yeah, me yeah. doing a design because mm-hmm. they're just going to change it because, you know, end of the day, they're artists. Yes. So they're going to put their own touch on it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. I, got, I got offered to do a tattoo apprenticeship, but I didn't, This the art was sort of ramping up more, mm-hmm. so I didn't really have time to do it. I wanted to learn it, so I bought the stuff. <laughs> I'm a so I would, like <laughs> half my <me> leg. <laughs> Savaganda. <laughs> I don't know. If I we'll can. wait till after. Yeah, it's not good yeah. for audio, is it? <laughs> Get your leg out. Good for me. <laughs> so where where do you have you got like a chocker diary now? Have you how yeah? Are you full for next few years? Yeah, till um, I'm taking bookings for shows for 2025 now. Oh, fantastic! So, That's good to hear. Yeah, so this year's full now. Next mm. year, I've got um, a few solo shows. Um, can you take Stop. your wife and kids along with you? I or, can do. I just yeah. I've got to pay for that. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> can FaceTime yeah. them then, can't I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I am gonna I am yeah. gonna take them along to some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking amazing. Yeah. So, so do you just plan that? Do you, do you plan your year based on right? It takes 
approximately X amount of time to plan, X amount of time to paint, then the actual show itself. Is that how you sort yeah. of stagger your year? Yeah, it is, yeah. So I've got a solo show in September. So I'll start, I'm, I'm starting that now. What are we in now? April? Mm. Yeah. So I'm starting Bloody that now hell. so that it's, I'm not rushing and I'm not up against the deadline or all like that. So yeah, they'll be ready for like end of August, ready to ship. And how many paintings will you do? Um, I try for solo shows, I try and keep it down to about eight, eight pieces. Ah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. And I might do you know, like some joins and stuff like that. Just so that it's, there's a, a range on pricing. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever do all like local-ish? Um, if someone no. wanted to come and see your, your work? The, the people can come to the studio. Oh, you, so you have yeah, your own yeah. studio? Yeah. Right? That's oh, it, yeah. Well, so people can come up to the studio and have a look and see what I do. And I oh, mean, it's not nice. a massive studio, but, you know, it fits a couple of people in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. That's, we'll have yeah, to yeah. sort out and come up and have a look. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yeah. Because like you say, we work shifts, so yeah. like we're, we've got us tens off, haven't we, coming up? So yeah. free as a bird for ten. Well, we're rattling as many podcasts off as we can next yeah. ten days, but... Would, uh, yeah, I'd love to come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. More than welcome. So, like, we, we like to not end it on, but like, ask you. Someone sat um, feeling how you felt. What do you say, like, to you no? Know, when you said you used to put them videos out, yeah. What were your message then? What would your message be to someone who was listening, thinking, I, I don't know, I'm left army, I've left my job, I'm something's not right. What would you say to that person? What? Um, what, what helps you? I'd, I'd probably want to know what what made them feel better at a point of their life, what yeah. made them feel happy and stuff, and try and go back to that. If it was something that they were doing or someone that they were talking to or um, a sport, a hobby, anything like that, give it a try. Mm. See if that helps. If it doesn't, then you can always try other stuff. You know, I mean... Little things like, I mean, it might sound pointless, but someone said to me, like, knitting, mm. stuff like that, because it, it takes your mind away from stuff because mm. you, you're focused on, you know, what you're doing. Um, but, yeah, just go back to, you know, what what makes you happy and stuff like that and takes you away. And if that's, you know, if, it, if that's not helping, then you definitely need to speak to people. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I mean, I I don't mind sharing this, but I've been speaking to you on for the last couple of weeks, and I feel like I am in a massive lull at the minute. Yeah. I'm not like deep in a dark hole or anything like. I have got it very good. Yeah. I'm not complaining, but I know that there's definitely been somewhat not right for me. Yeah, and I've said it to you. Mm -hmm. My problem is, which I've sort of come to realize is i'm such an extreme person right so like me I, I i do i do running like i've got an ultra marathon booked for july yeah but i haven't really been training i haven't really been dieting that well because it's pointless starting too early and i said to you the other day didn't i i need to get back to strength and conditioning yeah i need to be getting up going out 10 mile run because i know 100 percent i'll feel better i know if my diet's right i'll feel better and i on back of what you said i think that's important a, a real important point or there's one in there somewhere from me that don't leave it like I proact I know there's something I can proactively do to make myself feel better. Yeah. But I'm currently stopping myself from doing it for no reason at all. Like yeah, I have all yeah. time in the world. I, my wife, she's not bothered. She's like, Yeah, you go run fifteen mile, whatever I watch. So yeah, I can really relate to it. And to be honest, like this conversation is proper in home with me, yeah. to be honest, because I I know to put it into context for you, I, I need to pick the pencil up. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I need to start drawing because yeah, yeah. at minute, there's something there that I'm not doing. And I mean, I think we've said it before to anyone out there that's listening. If you are sat on the sofa, not feeling sorry for yourself, but knowing that you're not right and there's something you can try or something that you can do, that no one's stopping you. You're not tied yeah. to the sofa. You, you know, 
So yeah, really, really appreciate what you've just said there. Yeah, but it's like if um, even if you're not noticing it yourself, but you've got family members and stuff that are noticing, just listen. If they can help, then just take it. You know, take all the help you can get. Because I didn't notice it. Mm. Um, it obviously my family members they pointed out to me. It were only then that I started noticing it. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask, did you take it on board straight away? Or were you? Because no. in previous years, I were very naive to it. My mum, when I lived at home, my mum said, "Oh, you're depressed," and I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm mm. not. I'm smiling. I'm not depressed." And she was like, "You're my son. I, yeah. I know you. Please just do something." And thankfully, it it, it won't. It won't. Like you say, it wasn't like the deepest of holes that I were in. But I'm glad I listened when I did. You know what I mean? Uh, got out of it. And like now, like you say, Jay, you'd, I, I've learned how to be better. Uh, for me, I, I, I'm a talker. You know what I mean? That's how I do it. I, yeah. I, I can't run for shit and I, can't, I certainly can't draw for shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, it's, um, it's talking. And it's, yeah, it just works for me. I just, I tell Alison my problems and she's just washing up. It's like, yeah. And you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's all I need just to vent. And yeah, it works for me. So yeah, find, if you're there, find someone to talk to. If you're like me and can't draw and can't run. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think it's really important. We, we also do highlight the last thing you said. If you are struggling and there isn't a way out, do go seek help, like yeah. go to a doctor's. You know, they get an hard time at NHS and sometimes, all right, it might 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 be a delayed service or mm. it, they might not be able to offer exactly what you want, but yeah. going and actually speaking to someone, that could be enough to, you know, help you out enough. So to us listeners, anyone that is struggling, I mean... We can point you in the right direction. Man of in the mirror. Man in the, man mirror. In the mirror on Instagram. Yeah. Um, um, but also, even if you're not struggling and you want to chase a dream, you want to take your chances like you did. Yeah. Like you say, you had to, you, you at one point quit your job. Yeah. Um, off your own back to pursue a dream. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. A question for you then, coming off of that subject slightly. You got one daughter. Oh. Right. Two now. Two now. Yeah. I've got a six month old daughter as well. Oh congrats. Called Piper. Oh look class. That. Yeah. So, so what are you manic. what are your wife and your I won't say your kids because a six month old probably <laughs> ain't got that strong of an opinion just yet, but <laughs> your your elder daughter and your yeah. wife, what do they think to how all this is just you know They love it. Yeah, they love it. My missus, she's made up that it's gone from what it was because she's seen me go from literally mm -hmm. Struggling to sell a picture of a pair of trainers to where I am now, yeah, or not getting paid for certain stuff, you know, to you know, being invited to go out to like LA and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, she, she's 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 been like the rock throughout all of this, yeah. you know, because there's been loads of loads of times I've wanted to give up, and it were only like to be fair, it were only a year and a half ago I wanted to give up, and I was I was literally ready to pack it all in. I'd mm -hmm. had enough. Just, what, what, did she just say, nah, keep going, keep battling it out, keep yeah. knocking them out? That was it, it was just like, just pull me up. Yeah. She was like, you need to carry on with it. You know, you've started it, you need to, you need to keep going with it. Mm. Because it's, you don't know where it's going to go and you're just going to regret it. If mm. you stop now, you'll regret it and you'll always look back thinking, where could I have got to? Yeah, you don't want to be that guy in pub at, 67 yeah. year old saying I could, I could have been, been a, yeah we've all met him yeah, I could have yeah. been a great footballer but no I decided to <laughs> or a golfer or whatever it is you, yeah, you, you yeah. know we've all come across them people I could have been a professional artist if it weren't for that injury in high school <laughs> 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 no that's wicked how oh, you want to finish on I, 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 you I, know, you know I don't think this one this episode is one that we need to drag out for two hours like no. you give us <laughs> yeah. everything I one one thing that's definitely, you know, aligns with sort of the kudos of this uh, podcast is those at top of the mountain didn't fall there. It's the journey in between. Yeah. Uh, and 
the way you've spoken, the top of the mountain, you don't seem that it's up in cloud yeah. somewhere and you're never probably going to see I'll, it. I'll you're just going to keep it. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's that. amazing. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, this conversation in twelve every 12 months could be a completely different one. Yeah, well, easy. probably only for 12 months because after that you probably won't speak to us. No, that's it. We're be living in I'll, I'll come Kong. back every month. <laughs> <laughs> I need to source one of them Thornton Road market paintings me uh, <laughs> did you keep any of your work from afghanistan and iraq did you oh, oh you joking oh, through it god damn yeah that went it went in been that if only you knew what <laughs> you know <laughs> now then eh? yeah yeah oh wicked well yeah. thank you very much yeah. for your time so much. Can't, can't thank, thank you. you enough really appreciate it well, thank okay. you very much Thanks thank so you much. Yeah.